Welcome to the Tony Wilson Fishing Show. I'm down here at uh, Berry Hill Fisheries. I won't be shouting and hollering as per normal because it's absolutely rammed. I'm on what they call Bonds Lake. Every pig's gone, I think. There's one in the corner I've got here. It is totally awesome time, 5 to 1 in the afternoon. Seems like everybody's just sitting around. I'm going to be trying to catch um, fish, roach or carp, on three different types of meat. It's going to be lunch of meat, standard cubes, hot dog segments, which is my best barbel fishing bait, and then I'm going to make up, I used to make it with sausage rusk, a sausage paste from real sausages. So I'm looking for really three fish if I can, maybe three on big, I'm going to push my luck out and say three on big hooks, three on small hooks, so maybe three roach and three carp, who knows. So that's what we're aiming for. I'm down here in the corner, put the ground bait out just in the side. Got one, one patch in just off of those rushes just come about six feet out from the rushes and one in the shadow line over there. Could be fishing with feeders. I'm going to put them quite high using quiver tip rods and then I'm going to just scatter in loose, loose particles of lunch meat. So here's some lunch meat. Don't let that one run away. That's just left over and frozen from barbel fishing up on the River Wye. Nothing wrong with it at all, but occasionally it gets a skin on it. So I try and do it, say, one pack at a time, so it's nice and fresh, and you can always take that skin off that, and it'll be a different color underneath and fresh. Then the stuff I cut off, I use for throwing in for loose feed. Just get my knife, which is not altogether sharp, so I make holes for umbrellas in the river bank as well with this one. And look, I'll just show you how it dries out. It does go a bit sort of crusty. Can you see the you see the difference in the two colours there? You can catch on this, but I just like the fresh meat. I feel the fat content can sort of ooze out of that a little bit more. But again, just going to cut that down. That can all go in, either in the feeder. I've got certainly got a different feeder for you. Little tiny cubes like this. That helps get the roach going. I can't say I've caught a lot of perch on lunch meat. And then I'm going to take a, a cut about this big. This is going to be for loose feed and hooks. Almost what I call barbel size. So that's going to be hook baits. I'm not going to need a lot, obviously, but I'm going to need quite a bit thrown in. So you can either throw in a few large cubes which you know the small fish will be nibbling away at or you can go for lots of uh, little ones which you know unfortunately they will eat but it will get them feeding more all right it gives you a guide anyway now there's the ground bait which is pre pretty sloppy mix that is it's about three quarters uh, Bailey's number one horse feed and a quarter of bran and let it soak but don't over wet it but I'm only going in close I'll show you where I'm throwing it look just small balls and I like to keep the ball about the same size as the actual ground bait size I'm putting out with a feeder as so for instance I'm just going just out from those rushes anywhere there they'll hunt it down and then I'm using Something that you may never have seen before. Maybe if you have, you've seen it on our film. I'm sure somebody's going to copy it. You know, one of those guys that copies everything we do. They copy over the name of the copy, the feed, or the idea. It's golf ball. It's the driving range golf balls that you can use for practicing with air in them. So, I've got another one to show you. Just so people say it's not a golf ball, mate. Yeah, it is a golf ball. Look, there's a golf ball. These were given to me, they were cut down in half. 
guys glued weights and they're different weights which he had marked and now worn off 15 I suppose that's 15 grams that one I can't see it's a bit heavier a rigid tube through there and I just made it as an inline feed like this stop by a swivel and about six eight inches onto which goes the lunch and meat now then if I put the ground bit in there you'll see that it's almost the same size as the loose feed I've been putting in the pellets at uh, the little pellets of ground bait like this pretty much the same size so probably fish with buzzers because I'm filming as well so if I turn my head away for filming something I might miss the take on a quiver tip so I'll put my buzzers up so then what you do you can just push in some bits of lunch and meat around there a little cap on the top so when the little fish nibble this away, the lunch will meet will be underneath. And then, ouch, this is a, I'm throwing the packet away in there. I'll tell you what hook size I'm using, these very, very sharp hooks. A B983 wide gape specialist, chemically sharp, and they are sharp, and that's what I like. And when I put the, same as for barbel fishing, I don't put it right in the middle, I put it in the edge. So that when I twist it, I can just pull that around and leave that, that point showing like that. Look, it's an underhand lob. Barely even call that a cast. buzzer just purely then if I'm looking or filming somewhere else and I don't see that tip go I can always switch these off and still use the actual V here and turn those down just low like that all right let's get the second one out and you can also if you want just click it onto back wind for safety well, that lasted about three minutes before it went off and uh, Got it on the back one as well. That one was on the margin just in here. Well, I see this fish now, he's going so well. Oh yeah, he's a nice one. This guy's punching wood above his weight. God, he's doing well. There he's in. Yeah, you got some nice markers on that one. Fully scaled fish that one, in good condition, and that's fish one to the lunch of meat. I guess he goes about seven. Right. There he goes. The meat's all underneath that little cap there. And there's my cube. And obviously, I'm going to try that spot again. So I'm on, I'm on the buzzer, but I'm on back wind down here, so the reel can fly around. So this one's a slightly lighter one, this has got 15 on it, so I guess the weight in the bottom is 15 grams. Pack a bit of ground bait in. A few slices of that 
left over lunch of meat there. A little cap on top. And of course you look, you can turn it around, you can push bits in those little holes there to give you a bit of extra casting weight and a bit of extra feed out there. I make it into the same shape ball as I had with the uh, ground but I was throwing in loose. Slides up against the swivel and I just pop on. Now this time I've got a smaller smaller hook on, it's about a size 10. Again a wide gape. See I'm down here filming I can't be looking at the rod at the same time so that's why I leave an indicator on. If you're not making a film you just sit watching the rod top obviously. And I do the same, I just turn it so you can see the hook pod and bury it totally in the bait. Just my way. Take the drag. It's just a quiet tone. Put it on back one for safety. Right, in position now. And uh, just a question of waiting. I wonder if you ideally if you're really worried about fishing with rods up high like this you can just put your bag over the top if you wanted to then just lift into it that way I mean I'm right on top of them here I've got a six pound line on there both of those are six and this is just a standard Avon quiver tip that we use barbel fishing now I'm gonna give it five minutes or so <clears throat> and then I'm gonna uh, put a little bit of loose feed in just going to put a few loose bits of uh, meat in there. And then I think on this left hand one, I did have a couple of bangs on the right hand one. <clears throat> I think on the left hand one, maybe put a really, really small piece of meat and uh, see if we can't pick a roach off. Just check if the ground bait's still in the feeder. If it is, it means you're squeezing it in too tightly. Yeah, these are lots more. Okay, so I'm just using hot dog segments, but smoked hot dogs are really good. But I don't waste any of that juice. Put it in there. Helps with the ground bait. These ones are very, very cheap. Check with each fishery. It takes your tins home. Some say no tins, in which case you can do all this at home. Surprise these don't actually come with a ring pull, to be honest. Now these are really, really good for slower moving rivers for barbel. I've caught a lot of barbel to they're about 13 pounds, I think it's my biggest barbel was on one of these. I seem to remember the film's up there anyway. And again you can use small bits or you can use larger sections, whatever you want. Cut it down small like this, little discs I used to do quite well with like this. The other ones are jumbo hot dogs, smoked. Very good. And you can see how many, how many baits by disking it that I'm getting out of just one hot dog. Look, 
quite a lot. There's an awful similarity between a hot dog segment and my finger. <laughs> again, look, you can cut these up small for the feeder. So you cut them in half again. As small as you want or as large as you want. And then cut up wise, barber wise, about. Sort of, you can get about three. We'll try one of these in a minute. I'm sure there's not many people use hot dog segments here. Even with the catapult, they tend to disc off and distance, so they're better in ground bait or in a bait dropper if you're in a river using a bait dropper, or indeed um, one of those little. I think they call them a spawn where you cast out. You can see the wind catch them, but they'd all get picked up. Okay, the other bait is these fat boys. Regular, just regular sausages. Now these you can make paste baits from. Wow, that wind is getting up. If you're going to cut these ones up, I would suggest segments. They're very, very soft. Scissors cut better than a knife, I find. Raw sausages, obviously, you can catch on cooked sausages as well. Again, very good. Standard uh, barbell years ago was sausage meat. I'll show you in a second. So, I want to make a little bit of sausage paste, they want firming up a little bit. So for that I use some cheap bread, cheapest I can get. <laughs> it's always cheap with me, just like this. So simple, all old school techniques. I just do this, dip it once, that's all it takes, let it soak. Squeeze it out like a sponge. over and then just mash this into a paste but take the crust bits off so you don't make such a good paste they will after a while but generally a bit they're a bit hard to get into a decent paste don't worry won't get wasted they'll go in it just take a little bit longer to soak. That's about right. So just mash away. I find like this just yeah, the crust is a little bit dry there. I just find like this if you mash away like this, fold it back in on itself. Like pastries like bake bake and take or something and that whatever those programs are. And if it's too dry, just get another slice of mould into it. Okay. Then if you've got a skinned sausage, you can cut the skin off, peel off and get the meat out like this, look. Just squeeze it like a tube of toothpaste. My rod's going to be so filthy if it goes off now. There we go. The things you learn on Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I mean, I just work that meat, that sausage meat, in amongst the bread like this. I don't see much coming out. And of course, you can also mix a bit of ground meat in there as well. Yeah, like this. So there we go, there's a selection of baits here. 
all those meat baits, regular lunch of meat, cubed up or broken small, hot dog segments, again, I can't say cubed up, cylindered up, regular sausage for sausage meat, uncooked, you use it lightly on your own in the margins, or you can mix it and make a paste bait of it. So let's work our way through this little lot, see what we can get on the end of the line. You can see with that uh, inline feed, it slides really well. So I'm going to take lunch of meat off, off of this one. We'll try. Now, uh, there's a bite. Can you see that? So that's had a fish. So there are roach down on the inside where those ducks are now. So that tells me I need possibly a smaller hook and maybe a quarter of the size of that cube of lunch of meat. Let's go for a disc, double disc. I tend to go through the soft side. If you go through the skin, it can be quite hard. Okay, go through and just try and bring the hook point out. So it's just on the outside, if you can, just slightly sticking up. Same principle, a little bit of ground bait, just a little bit. Don't forget I've got ground bait I've been throwing in as well. Here again, you can see I've cut up all the uh, little bits of hot dog segment, lot lot smaller. Just tap them in the top. You could do this with an ordinary feeder, obviously, of course you can. There we go. Let's put that down. Well, it's very nice, very pretty. So we've now got hot dog on both of them. We'll see what happens, boys. The ducks seem to like the smell. A little bit short there, but you never know. Back wine, Graham. See already that's gone into shade. Well, as I said earlier, where the sun's going around, it puts it more in shade with the ducks in there. Well, a tiny piece of sausage uh, paste, guys. And I've lost one carp and I've had another one on the straight sausage and bread paste. I don't think he's a very big one. He's still worth catching. And that one was everything there, so nothing out here at all. The other one's in here. I'm just going to drop this other one out of the way. For a second. Although for small fish, he's going pretty well. Well, wow, that's a uh, sausage paste for you. Strange sort of fight, it's like he's tangled in it somehow. That's a common, the lights are common. If we get it in, come on fish. Going for those bushes. Tiger moth or something that was, or shot with camel, one of those older First World War types. Here he comes. Oh, he's quite a nice fish, but quite a nice fish. He's in. Is he in? He's in, yeah. So you go, guys. That's a nice size common carp. <coughs> there we go. So two out two out of three. So now I think we'll try the hot dog segment.
trap is that? Right, now you're going to try a piece of, I've rolled them into, that's a straight uh, sausage meat there, I've rolled it into a ball. So that's, you can use, you can make what size you want, I'll just go through it once. This will not cast very far, you can mould it right around the hook. And they can't see the hook at all there. So you can see. No, that's just me. And I've got the old standby there, bread flake soaking, ready to make some more sausage meat paste. Now this is straight sausage meat. Let's see what that brings. The taste, we used to make it with flour, does actually make it a lot stiffer. Well, I've had absolutely nothing out there on that one. All the takes have been down the side here. They tend to have slowed up for the moment. So I've thrown some bait in, I'll show you where, about. Not even as far as that, it's been close here. So I don't know, it's the same thing whether people come in and put their bait in close by or not, I don't know there, so we try one close in the margins. And probably take the feeder off. And might even just free lime on there. Well, I've had absolutely nothing out there on that one. All the takes have been down the side here. They tend to have slowed up for the moment. So I've thrown some bait in, I'll show you where, about. Not even as far as that, just been close here. I don't know, it's the same thing whether people come in and put their bait in close by or not. I don't know there, so we try one close in the margins. And probably take the feeder off. And might even just free lime on there. Of course, there's no real way of knowing exactly how much your ground bait is being eaten unless your rod tops are tweaking away like they said the quiver tipping or if you see bubbles coming up I've seen no bubbles at all I've seen no surface movement pretty dead I have to say it's pretty dead so you don't know really whether to feed more and I fed quite a bit trust me or less there's no point putting it in there if there's nothing to eat it I don't mind if it's being eaten but I should be getting more bites so I've only got Two hours left now to try and catch the third one. Well, actually the fourth one. It's a sausage mi mix with bread as a paste. I'm trying to catch one on sausage and I'm trying to catch one on hot dog segment. So we really need to. I don't need to pick this up with a wasp in it. Good way. I've seen a couple of fish caught way over there. I've heard one splash down there, so yeah, there's a guy right down the bottom, I think he's got one. I can't do my normal shouting and hollering because there's 52 anglers there. You're taking away in a white suit. That's me, not them. I think I'm going to get somebody telling me to go to free line, but I'll give that another five, ten minutes with the uh, golf ball feeder. Well, this one's going really well, boys. This is on the actual piece of sausage. Not a big fish. In comparison to other waters, obviously, you know, you can get 20 pounders, double figure fish doing this. Same method with sausages. Different meats, lunch and meat and stuff. Mind you, three out of three, we're gonna get it. I think the only one I'm short of is the hot dog segment. Wow, well, they're going well. I should be careful bringing it in too quickly because I don't want to go under the staging with it, you know. Well, obviously, I don't want to go under the staging. The fish doesn't need to go under the staging. It looks like a common carp. This fish is just unbelievable. Not quite sure. Well, he's been eating other than my sausages. Oh, he must have had a lot of protein, all that meat I've been feeding them. It's just a regular common. It's like a giant chub. But he's in. He is in. He is indeed in. 
<clears throat> there we go. Get that hook out before he wakes up. There's the hook out. There's the carp in the light, look. Six ish. And back he goes. Right, now I've got to go totally on hot dog. The roach are out of it, by the way, boys. The roach are out. I'll try small bits. They're not taking it. So it's down to getting a, a fish on the hot dog segment for you. So, hour and a half to do it. Fingers crossed. Here comes a feeder. Oh, oh yes, I love it. Mm. So you can see how this one's gone in the sun there, if I turn sideways, hopefully. It's dried out, so you can just cut that piece off. Already done it that side, and you can. I tend to wet the blade for this, so it cuts. I mean, these hot dog segments, look, just run the knife right under the skin. Like this. You're effectively peeling it, revealing, delete that as well. And there you have a just plain piece which you can just push your hook into this time because don't forget it's soft. There you go. Bury the hook just there, just like that. Bait up and out it goes. I just think that, uh, let's just get this out. I've used a lot of my segments up on the early ground bait balls. I just think it's a little bit more smell comes out when it does dry out. And you can do the same with lunch meat. You can skin it as well. So here goes, hot dog. So I've gone from Taking the feed, we're going to go to Jesus Christ. That's, that's the hot dog segment. <laughs> trying to put the thing back in your mouth. Well, you no doubt um, got an idea of the take, and that's why I put the reel on back wind as well. So that's a peeled hot dog segment. Straight out. Bang. As I say, all these tips, totally awesome fishing tips, are going well today. It's a meat fest at the moment. It doesn't feel a big fish, but then the others don't feel big fish. And all coming in at six pluses. Yeah, even the duck's impressed. A peeled hot dog. Cast out, talking on camera, and rod nearly explodes. Bonds Lake Burial Fisheries, day ticket, didn't even rock up till the afternoon. I've got to watch that stage in there. Wow, he was digging and digging. I'm going to take a punt and say I reckon this is a common. the wrong way then pal. Yeah, nice mirror. If you can stay calm. Probably probably coming in around nines I should think that one. Eights. Eight and probably nine. It's a great nine. It's not a double. What a great fish and a great session. Giving you guys all the tips how to use meat. Let's get this kitty back. Let me cover in the net for a minute. Won't take much recovering, I'm sure. Good. Well, another tip you can do. I should be charging 50p. That was a beep, was it me? I might have knocked it. Another tip you can do is, well, I should actually cut this down a bit to show you really. You can trim them and make them smaller. So I've skinned this one, the same as I did the others, but this time 
I'm going to cut the corners off them. We do this barbel fishing, it makes it uh, roll through the swim a lot easier. Just give it a bit of a haircut. You'll notice a lot of that goes in my hand because I love throwing stuff in the water. It's sort of vandal at heart. And that one I do sink because it's a smaller hook. And I'll tell you what we're doing. We'll just see if we can get this shot further out there and try that swim I baited up earlier. Perfect. So that's got, now, as you saw in the last fish I had, that's got a treble A shot right next to it. This one, I've got, because I'm now watching the rods, I'm sitting here not doing quite, I'm filming, but I've got the camera on my head so my hands are free. So the left, the right hand one's on, on well sort of back one, but look, you can see it's on the floor. So the handle's on the floor, but I can grab it there, and I can, I'm now concentrating on this one as well, so I'm more zoned in, I've got barely an hour. See if I can get another fish, but we have had four fish on four different types of meat. Sausage paste, we made up. Sausage meat, luncheon meat, and hot dog segment. It gives you all a bit of scope to play with. I've got a bit of sopped up bread there left over. I suppose I might as well throw that in as well. I'm not gonna make any more, more paste, but we've, we've proved our point here. We have proved our point big time. All little bits like this, chuck them all in. All the skin bits, look, break them up, throw them in. Carp eat the lot. Let's mash that up. If you get crust, if you just give them a bit of a soak like this, look, and then bust it with your thumb. And then don't throw it out one big handful, throw it out in a couple, like that. Well, it's turned around, still. Not mad fishing, but uh, very, very acceptable. And a usual greedy fisherman, I'd like one more before I go home. Well, it seems to have slowed up a little bit. Well, it wasn't even fast to start with, it was sort of steady. If you want to keep your meat fresh, get a bait can, fill it full of water, and just like we've done, but you can see here, this has just been in a bit of water there. there and it keeps it, it doesn't skin up so quickly. And the matchmen do it when they have, uh, look, see that bit's been out the water, so it's skinning up, and that bit's in the water and it stays the same. You keep it wet and it'll be fine. And again, if you don't use them, take them back, put them in the freezer. Well, boys, the inside rod, um, just get untangled here a minute. The inside rod just went off, just dangling over the edge of the uh, jetty here. And that was a segment, a peeled segment of hot dog segment. I don't know, you can have a peeled segment of a segment, but I've got one on smaller fish. Just pop this off while I net it for you. I couldn't show you the last fish because the battery died and as I was getting in the camera bag the right hand rod took off. So I'm on another one. It was about four pound common. This one is again a common. Ready for the net. Give me a sec. Six or is that seven? I can't remember. I can't remember. Wow, do you feel lucky? There you go.
Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, guys. I'm going to call it quits now. We've got quite a few fish on three different types of meat baits there. Hopefully, you'll give it a go too. We'll see you next time. Hit the sub button, hit the notification bell, and we'll do our best to put a few fish in front of your screens.